Good morning and welcome all to our celebration of the Mass of Friday within the octave, octave of Easter. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful gift, this opportunity to celebrate your wonderful gift to us. And so we can properly do that, let us now call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgave Peter, although he denied you three times. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us all this day and inspire us to have the courage to go out into the world and proclaim your resurrection. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal Mystery and the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that we may celebrate by professing the faith we may express in deeds through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priest, the captain and the t of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them. By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and the people and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, and in his name this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given by the human race by which we are saved. The Word of the Lord. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O oh Lord, grant salvation. O oh Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We will also come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He said to them, Children, have you caught anything? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and he jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on the shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you had just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, in a like manner, the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. This is one of these rare instances where the gospel reading happens prior to the first reading, our reading from Acts. And Peter's just my man again in, in this reading. You know, I, John portrays this as the third sighting. The first two were both in the upper room. And as best we know from John's gospel, this is still, they've just been sitting there, and the first time he comes in, he appears, peace be with you, speaks to him a little bit, eats a little fish, then he's gone. Then the second time, is P Thomas didn't believe it. So he approaches Thomas and says, go ahead, put your fingers in my nail holes and your hand in my side. And now here's the third time. 
We don't know how much time had elapsed between that second appearance and our story today. But most of us who have kind of had enough of this staying home with coronavirus can probably relate to the cabin feeder fever and just the nervousness. Peter was such a doer. He was going nuts, it sounds to me like, because I meditate on this. Well, I, I'm going to go fishing. I, I can't do this anymore. I, I got to go do something. We're going to go with you. You know, now, does that represent the fact, some theologians would say, that he's turning away from his mission as the leader of the church and he's going back to his former way of life? I would hardly think so. I think it's more the cabin fever. But what happens is they're out there. Okay, here's another re rehearsal. Of you Just like when he first called Peter. He calls him all over again a second time. So maybe so. And what, how does he signal that it's him again just as he did the first time? They cast the net over. They've got such a haul, they can't bring it in. They drag it to the shore. Of course, this time Peter doesn't hesitate. He doesn't kneel down and say, Depart from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. He can't wait to go see him because the last time he talked to him, he had denied him, right? Uh, the last time he was there, he had a chance to speak one-on-one -on -one anyway. So he swims the shore. He can't wait for the, for the boat to get there. And the second Peter says, bring some of the fish. He, I can imagine him just running, beating everybody else. He's going to be the one to go get them. He's Jesus' right-hand man. He can't wait to show that he's, he's so sorry for what he's done. And so how many, we're told this odd number of 153 fish. You got to wonder why that's in there. Most theologians say, of course, that was thought to be the number of nations in the world at that time. So Jesus has reminded him, hey, be patient, wait on me, don't go thinking about going back to your former way of life. I've still got a huge mission for you. And the fact that they say that even though the number of fish was so large, the net was not torn. He sent those 11 that remain at this point out to convert the whole world. Seems like an impossible mission, especially in communications and things. They didn't have any flock note or Facebook or any other kind of way to get this message out in mass. They had to go walk to town to town. Seemed impossible. But even though the catch was so large, the net was not torn. So have trust in God is what that's all about. And of course, the reading goes on. And we know at the end of this, he asked Peter, does he love him? And he gives him three opportunities to state that he does to forgive and clean the three times he denied him and move on. That's the wonderful, merciful, loving God we have. You know, I'm asked sometimes by people who are Catholic, well, why do y'all feel like you got to go to a man to confess your sins? I say, we don't have to go to a man. We can confess directly to God. There's some that are big enough. I, I could imagine just going to God and not going to God's representative that he put on this earth and hearing him say, you are forgiven in persona of Christe, in the, in the person of Christ. I want to know I'm forgiven, just like Peter wanted to know he was forgiven. And boy, did things change by the time we get to Acts. Now they're not sitting around hiding in an upper room anymore. They're out in the temple preaching every day. And, of course, this is the story. Uh, it picks in after the, he's already healed him. But the cripple that waited by the beautiful gate every day, that everybody had seen him all his life, knowing him there as a cripple, he said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. So rise in the name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. Boom. Guy's feet immediately are healed. You stand up, they all rejoice. <clears throat> and another 2,000 come to believe that day. And of course, <clears throat> the guard and all, they came. Here he is again. Now he's preaching. He's doing the same thing that there Jesus did. So they got to haul him in. And does he shrink back at all? He tells them to their face, that Jesus, that you rejected, you builders. He was the cornerstone. And it's getting built with you or without you. We're going right on ahead without you now. That's kind of what he's telling them. What boldness, you know, and, and you will hear later, if you recall, they go ahead and they, they beat him a little bit for it, and they rejoice that they were found worthy to receive a beating and chastisement for the word of God. They rejoiced over it. So let us today, be all, let all doubts, let all fears, let anything we've done where we have let Jesus down and we felt like we're not worthy to be his arms and legs, just as Peter felt, let him know that he's there re re forgiving us every single time, especially, you know, Seems like I'm, I'm just like everybody else. Keep confessing the same thing over and over. Why can't I get past this? How come I can't beat this? You know, don't get down on yourself. No, he's there to forgive you every time you fail and every time you seek his forgiveness. And then let us all be emboldened. No matter how worn or unworthy we feel we are, we are his chosen people. We are his arms and legs. And let's go out there and spread this great, joyous message of healing, love, and mercy and eternal life that he has won for all of us. God bless you. Let us now lift all of our prayers, crosses, concerns, whatever heavy burden or anxiety may be filling our heart this day 
Let's offer it up to our risen Christ and trust in his providence for our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of your church, for the leadership of Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael Duca, especially in this most difficult time, and all the pastors who are trying to stay with their parishioners in whatever way they can for this great technology. We give you thanks for that, dear Lord. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of those who are putting themselves in the way of harm with this COVID-19. We pray for all those who've lost loved ones to it, those who are suffering from it now, and those who are doing the research. Please send your grace, your healing, and your knowledge into all of those groups, wherever they may be needed. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who passed away in the last few months, especially Sister Christina Marie Griggs, devoted nun of Carmelite Order who stayed with you and served you for 73 years as a nun from the age of 15 on. For her so Lord, and all of so many other religious who've given themselves completely to you throughout their lives, we pray to the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all of those who are celebrating a birthday today, those who are celebrating their birth into Christ and the next life today. May you be with all those people on either end, those coming into this world, those celebrating the entrance to this world, and those who are exiting this world and entering yours. May with all their family members rejoice in all of those events. We pray to the Lord. And for all of those people, Lord, we have promised to keep in our prayers. For those intentions, we hold in the silence of our heart. Heavenly Father, we thank you for turning a merciful ear upon these prayers and all those that we offer up to you from around the world. And we ask that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With a humble spirit and contrary and accepted by you, they may sacrifice in your sight this day, be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice and pray be glory to his name for our good and good of all this holy church. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit down upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that by partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Saint Anne and Saint Philomena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. And may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We invite Christ to be saved everlasting life. Through the blood of Christ to be saved everlasting life. Those that you at home, please recite your most holy Jesus prayer at this point. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And may thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.